podcast. A podcast devoted to enriching your prayer life with biblical wisdom, real life testimonies, and hands on prayer experience. This is your host, Charles Lochte. Today's podcast is the third podcast in my series, Praying for Our Families from the Book of Proverbs. In this series of podcasts, you will have the opportunity to pray for your loved ones by joining me in praying for my family using the book of Proverbs as our prayer guide. Proverbs is filled with beautiful wisdom for our daily lives and is therefore a fantastic prayer outline for interceding for our families and ourselves. In today's podcast, I'll be praying for my family from Proverbs chapter 3. If you are unfamiliar with praying the word or using the Bible as your prayer language, please visit episode 1, Praying for Proverbs 1, for a brief crash course on why we pray the word and how to pray the word. As a friendly reminder, please subscribe to my family's YouTube channel, hit the like button, and turn on notifications. This will help you stay up to date on anything I upload on YouTube and will also help grow our channel so that our prayer community can grow. If you have any questions about anything in this podcast or you're interested in subscribing to our ministry updates, please leave a comment below or email me at lochteministry at gmail.com. That is L-O-C-H-T-E ministry at gmail.com. You can also visit our ministry website at lochteministry.odoo.com to find all our ministry content and subscribe to our mailing list. Again, that is L-O-C-H-T-E ministry.odoo.com. If you want to support our ministry, please scroll to the bottom of this video's description for details on how to give. Lastly, the background music you hear in this podcast is an ambient music track I recently released on YouTube called Sell All and Follow Me. If you enjoy it and want to listen to more ambient music I have created on YouTube, please check out the link below in the video's description. Before we pray from Proverbs 3, let's take a few moments to come before the throne of God and connect with the Holy Spirit. You may take this time to preview Proverbs 3 to familiarize yourself with the language and content in this chapter. Lastly, don't forget the tools I taught you in episode 1 for how to pray the word, especially by starting with Thanksgiving. So let me open up in prayer. Father, we come before you right now. We thank you for the sea of glass that's before your throne. We thank you for the throne that is set in heaven, Lord, where the four living creatures cry out holy, 24 elders, surround your throne and cast down their crowns before you. Lord, we thank you for the scriptures that have been breathed by your spirit to teach us and to train us in righteousness. We thank you for your implanted word that's able to save the soul. And Lord, we thank you that as we pray these words back to you, Lord, that we have confidence that you hear us, that you always hear us, Lord, I ask you to give prayer promises specifically from this chapter to all those who are listening and all those who are engaging in prayer. Lord, release promises for their family members, for their children, for their spouses, for their relatives, whoever you impress upon their hearts to pray for. Quicken verses to us, Lord. And and as we prepare our hearts to pray, We still our spirits before you. We tune in to your voice that is faithful to speak to us. And we just acknowledge, Holy Spirit, that we need your help in approaching the throne of God right now and presenting our requests before him with humility and yet with confidence. Let's just take a few moments and soak for a moment. A few minutes.
So, Father, we thank you for your promise that you say, My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Lord, we thank you that this promise was to your son. It is to us. It's to our families, to our children, to our spouses, and to their children. And so, Father, we ask you to give our children hearts to know you, hearts that keep your law, hearts that keep your commands. And we thank you, Lord, as you turn their hearts to you, that length of days and long life and peace will be added unto them, Lord. I pray that my sons would fulfill every day Lord, that you have planned for them to walk out. That they would walk in every good work that you have prepared for them to walk in. Lord, that they would experience the peace of heaven as they walk out your commands and treasure your words within them. Lord, I pray that your law would not go in one ear and out the other, but would be deeply rooted and inscribed upon their hearts. Lord, I pray for my wife that she would experience your peace in a greater measure. That her health and her emotions and her soul would prosper as she trusts you in keeping your words. I thank you for these promises, Lord. And Lord, I ask you to show us, to show my children, to show my wife, to show myself where we are not trusting your words and therefore not experiencing your blessings. Lord, I pray that mercy and truth would never forsake. I thank you that you bind them around our necks and you write them upon the tables of our heart. And that your desire is that we would find favor and high esteem in the sight of both you and men. Lord, I thank you for my sons growing in favor just as your son grew in favor and in stature with both God and men. That they would live above reproach before you and before their community. I thank you for teaching them by your spirit how to keep mercy and truth upon their hearts and to not let them go. For you said in in Matthew 5 that those who are merciful shall receive mercy. Lord, we need your mercy. My sons need your mercy. My wife needs your mercy. I need your mercy. Lord, let not mercy and truth but let them sit upon our heart bound as a necklace around our neck. We thank you that your mercy and truth is not heavy and burdensome. It doesn't weigh us down. It's, it's light. And Lord, I thank you that you've instructed us to write them on the tablets of our heart. So Lord, I pray that my sons would have a spirit of diligence, that they would fear you and that they would take your law and your words and write them. Teach me how to teach the word in such a way, Lord, that would inspire them that would make them hungry for more, that they would go into their own time and take your words and meditate upon them and chew on them. Lord, teach me how to wash my wife in the water of your words, to speak phrases and encouragements from the scriptures, Lord, that would penetrate and take deep root in her heart and would bear 30, 60, 100 times fruit in her life. And Lord, I thank you for teaching us how to trust you with all our hearts. I pray that I would be an example of one who trusts you with all my heart, does not lean upon my own understanding, and I confess that it's so easy to lean upon my own understanding, Lord, to think I know it. But I pray for that discipline to pray about everything, to to acknowledge you in everything, to seek you in everything, God, that my sons would see it, that my wife would see it. It would rub off on them, and they would walk it out all their days and that there would be generations upon generations of descendants who practice this beautiful privilege of approaching God and asking him, what do you like? What pleases you? I thank you for your promise, Lord, as we acknowledge you and that's not just looking your direction, but that it's inquiring with humility and asking, Holy Spirit, what 
do you like what I'm doing? Or do you want me to do something different? I thank you that you're faithful, Lord, to direct my sons, Lord, as they as they grow up and are questioning, what are you calling me to, God? What what is what am I supposed to be when I grow up? And they get that pressure from society. Lord, I thank you that as they don't trust on their in their own understanding, they don't lean in on just knowledge and things that voices that, that have told them what to do and how to think, but instead they they look up, up to the heavens, they look to you and they seek you and they trust you. And that you will direct their paths. And it says in the Psalms that all your paths are mercy and truth. That they don't have to be afraid of missing it when they know that they've given it to you and that you will, you will be faithful to fulfill this promise, Lord. So I thank you. You shall direct my family's path. You shall direct our path in the season as we're seeking about what to do and where you're calling us to fellowship and where you're calling us to serve. And Lord, all these questions that are upon our hearts, Lord, we lay before you and you direct our paths. We just release all anxiety, worry, and fear to you, knowing that you direct our paths. And all you ask us is just to ask you, to trust you. Lord, we just say right now, we trust you with all our heart. Lord, protect us. Protect my wife. Protect my sons from being wise in their own eyes. Protect myself. But instead, Lord, give them the fear of the Lord so that they would depart from evil and they would experience health even in their flesh. Their mortal bodies would experience the blessings as they eat and drink according to your glory, according to the ways that you've taught us. They would not feed upon the things of this world, but they would feed upon your words and they would feed on literal food according to your wisdom and experience strength in their bones and health in their flesh. Lord, I pray that their health and their bodies would prosper and be strong and their their immune systems would be strengthened because they're rooted and grounded in your word and they, and they trust you and they obey you. That they would not be led by their carnal appetites, but they would be led by your spirit and led by truth. Lord, I thank you for filling our home with plenty, for filling our hearts with plenty, for filling our lives with plenty, with abundance and overflowing, not just filling it, but causing to overflow that there would be more than enough to share and to give, that we would be abundant in blessing, that we may abundantly give and bless others. Father, as we honor you and trust you with everything that we have, we thank you that you ask for the first, but everything is yours. And so, Lord, we just give you, I pray that my sons would practice this discipline, Lord, that they would receive this testimony, and we thank you for the way that you have abundantly blessed our family financially and through provision as we've given you access to everything we have in obedience. Lord, I pray that this legacy and this testimony would live on with my sons live on with my wife, live on with our grandchildren. Lord, I pray that my children would not despise your chastening. They would not despise your discipline, but they would understand that your correction is your is because you love them, that all your judgments are perfect love. Lord, I pray that every lie that they would enter their hearts about your discipline, about your correction, that would cause them to turn away from you. I just thank you for revealing the cross to them. I thank you for revealing your love for them. And Lord, I remember a time when you disciplined me and I said, Father, I love your discipline because I know that you care. It's you, or you pursuing me as you disciplining me. And Lord, I pray that you'd give my sons wisdom to understand that, to receive that, to walk in it, and that they would not be ones who are disciplined but go right back to their wrong behaviors, but they would fear you and that they would respond out of their love for their connection with you, not wanting to hurt your heart or grieve you, grieve the Holy Spirit. Lord, help us, our my wife and I, discipline with your discipline and not with just human, fleshly discipline, God, so that our sons would trust your discipline by the way that they are disciplined by us. Forgive us for when we've disciplined in our own strength and out of anger and not in the right spirit. We've given our sons a wrong impression about correction and discipline, Lord. Cleanse their hearts of that. And let them see the way that you discipline. 
is in such a way that brings about a harvest of righteousness. Lord, I pray that you would give my sons wisdom and understanding. And I thank you for with this wisdom and understanding comes happiness, comes great gain. Lord, that they would not seek after money and mammon and wealth, but they would seek after you. And that as you give them wisdom and understanding, they would truly be able to say as the proverb says that wisdom and understanding is better than fine gold. Her profits are better than silver. Lord, that they would carry the true wealth of heaven in their hearts and that they'd be set apart in their community and their generation as men of understanding and men of righteousness. I pray for my wife, Lord, that give her more of the spirit of wisdom and understanding that she would experience the length of days that's in your hand and the riches and honor that comes from your hand. That her ways would be ways of pleasantness and all her paths would be peace. I thank you that you are a tree of life to those who take hold of you. That your wisdom is a tree of life. And happy are all those who retain. Lord, I pray for retain, that we would be ones who retain your wisdom that we would not just hear your words and not do them, but that we would be doers of your wisdom, that we would apply that which you speak to us and reveal to us. Thank you that the secret things belong to you, but Lord, the things that you've revealed belong to us and our children forever. I thank you, Lord, that by wisdom you founded the earth and by understanding you established the heavens. And by your knowledge, the depths were broken up and clouds dropped down the dew. Lord, I thank you that this wisdom and understanding is what has forever fascinated me, seeking after has forever fascinated me, God, that your beauty, the beauty that's found in in understanding how you created even this earth and how you created the heavens has drawn me out of sin, has drawn me out from addictions, has drawn me out from distractions. Lord, I pray that my children will be students of eternity, that they be ones who seek after your wisdom and understanding all the days of their life, that they would behold your beauty and inquire in your temple. Lord, I thank you for revealing how you broke up the depths and how you established the heavens and how you founded the earth. Lord, reveal the ancient ways as the nations come into your house to learn your ways, Lord, that they would be ones who would be able to instruct and teach nations, disciple nations in your wisdom and understanding. And Lord, I pray for grace, grace to keep your words. Father, that my son's capacity to retain and keep your wisdom would grow as they mature in age. That my wife and I would grow in our capacity to retain wisdom. That it would never depart from our eyes, Lord. That we would never let your wisdom depart from our eyes. Lord, when we begin to look away, Lord, pull upon our hearts, release conviction, send your word and save us. I thank you that you promised that your wisdom would be life to our soul. Lord, I thank you. We receive even now, Lord, your life in our soul. Receive your grace around our neck. Thank you that we can rest assured that our children will walk safely in your ways and their foot will not stumble. And when they lie down, they will not be afraid. And that their sleep shall be sweet. Lord, I thank you for our sleep being sweet as we keep you in front of us. We keep your words in front of us. We keep your wisdom in front of us. I thank you that we won't fear, but that we will walk with confidence. We will not be afraid, nor will we stumble, because we have kept your words in our heart. I thank you that sudden terror, chaos, calamity, tragedy will not shake us. That when the wicked come, Lord, it will not shake us. Because your wisdom, your ways have been established in our hearts and we do not look away from them. We keep your description. We have your life in our soul. And our foot shall not be caught. Lord, I thank you that you've called us to be ones who do not withhold good from those to whom it is due. When it's in the power of our hand to do so. Lord, I pray that this would start with honor. That my sons would be sons who are generous with honor. Lord, that they would not withhold 
affirmation to those who need to be affirmed, that they'd be not silent, but they would be they would have gracious speech. That my wife would be one of gracious speech. I would be one of gracious speech, Lord. That we would not withhold good from those who it's due when when the power of grace is upon our lips, that we would every word that we speak would impart grace to the hearers. Lord, I pray for my sons to be ones who walk in justice and righteousness in every area of their life as they are in school and as they mature and have jobs. That they would have a heart for the poor, the needy, the afflicted. And they would not withhold good. Lord, I pray for more of your spirit, more of heaven, as we walk around those who are dying and hurting and lost and needy and poor, that we would not withhold from them your promises. We would not withhold from them your presence. We would not withhold from them your truth. But we would be generous, giving not just in finances, but giving in words, giving in truth, giving in spirit. That this would be a reality of our entire family and our descendants after us. Lord, I pray that we'd be ones who love our neighbors, not who devise evil against them or just not even ignore them. But my sons would have hearts to love those around them. They would be like the good Samaritans whose eyes are keen and their ears are attentive to the needs of others around them and they would be quick to step out of their agenda and out of their plans and embrace inconvenience to love the one in front of them. I pray they would not be ones who strive without cause. They would fight in righteousness as you make war in righteousness, Lord. But they would be peacemakers. They would be mediators. That they would be persuasive influencers. And they would contend as you contend with strategic love. Father, I pray that our family in this season would not be ones, and not just this season, but seasons to come, would not be ones who envy the oppressed, that we not envy those who seem like they're succeeding but are oppressing and gaining through greed and false ways. But that we keep our eyes on the true wealth, as you say earlier in this chapter, that we would reject every way of the wicked one, and that we would not be like the perverse person who is an abomination to you. But I thank you, Lord, that your secret counsel, your hidden man is with those who walk in uprightness. Lord, I pray for my sons, my family, my wife, myself, to be ones who receive your secret counsel, your intimate counsel, because we are your friend. We do what you say, tell us to do, and we draw near to you, and we trust you, and we do not lean upon our own understanding, but we trust you in all our ways. We walk with a brightness in our house, and that you entrust us with your secret counsel, Lord. Lord, I just thank you for your blessing on the home of the just and that our house will be a house of justice. Our family will be a family of justice and the descendants after us will be families of uh, descendants of justice and that your blessing shall be upon them, Lord, that they will not be, your curse shall not be upon them. They won't be the house of the wicked. But like you, they will scorn the scornful and give grace to the humble and they will inherit glory. That shame shall not be their legacy, for that's the legacy of fools. Lord, I thank you for hearing these prayers. I thank you for leading those who are listening and how to pray for their families from the content in Proverbs 3. I thank you for quickening certain scriptures in the season. I pray for encouragement. I pray for all those who are listening, anyone who has a family member that a child or a spouse or even a relative grandchild who is wayward right now lord we just lift them up to you we thank you for going after them we thank you for turning their hearts to you that they would answer the call of wisdom crying out in the streets and that they're they would not be the fool who is mocked at in the day of calamity that they would be the house of the wise that your blessing is upon and that they would trust you with all their hearts Lord, we just seal these things by your Spirit in Jesus' name. 
Well, thank you for listening to this episode of Praying with Charles, Praying for Our Families from Proverbs. And I look forward to praying next week from Proverbs 4. I encourage you to read it even before we pray. It really helps to read the chapter, to digest it before we pray. And you can pray a lot easier. Don't forget to go through the video description if you want to check out our ministry website, how to give to us and support our ministry, um, access to ambient music that I've created or other podcasts, as well as uh, the blog that I've started. And if you're interested in joining our mailing list, you can um, email me at Lochte Ministry at gmail.com and uh, I'll add you to our uh, monthly mailing newsletter. Thanks again for listening and I bless you in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.